everybody, Miss Christina here, and I'm one of the four naturalists here with Harris County Precinct One's Environmental Education Programs. In today's video, we're gonna be learning about one of the most prolific and biologically diverse habitats here in the Gulf Coast area, and that is the wetland ecosystem. So let's get started. Now here in Texas, wetlands cover about seven and a half million acres of land, most of which can be found here in the Gulf Coast area. Now by definition, a wetland is any area of land that is either covered by water or saturated with water. Now there are many different kinds of wetlands in Texas. We've got bottomland forests, we've got swamps, saltwater marshes, tidal flats, prairie potholes, and even the edges of ponds and lakes. Today, we're exploring this wetland here, which is a small educational pond located at our Challenger 7 Memorial Park Environmental Education Center. Now, wetlands are many different things to many different people. They have many major attributes that benefit plants, animals, humans, and the environment. Let's take a look at some of the natural functions of wetlands and why it's important that we should work so hard to try to protect and conserve them. I have with me here some everyday objects that will help us illustrate those benefits. Now, first and foremost, wetlands are homes. Many different types of wildlife will either call wetlands homes or at least visit from time to time in order to utilize all of the wonderful resources they provide. Resources like food, water, and all the vegetation in and around a wetland acts as shelter for many different types of wildlife. Migrating birds will use wetlands as resting stops in their travels. And many different types of wildlife will also utilize a wetland as a nursery in order to raise their young. Now wetlands are also sponges, which is extremely useful to us here in the Gulf Coast since our area is so prone to getting lots of rain and lots of hurricanes. Not only can they hold immense amounts of water to help reduce flooding, but they can also absorb any excess runoff water from heavy rains until it gradually will either drain downstream um, or it'll seep down into the soil. Now, even when standing water dries up, maybe in a time of drought, um, they can retain the moisture for a time. Now wetlands are also mixers. The plants in a wetland help absorb and mix the nutrients and oxygen in the water and help cycle them through the food webs. The plants also will help keep nutrient concentrations from reaching very toxic levels. Now wetlands are also cleaners. They have the ability to purify the environment. They are strainers in the fact that wetland plants will slow down water flow, causing silt and debris from the water to strain out and settle. They're filters because they will filter out smaller impurities in the water, and they are antacids. They will trap and neutralize the toxic substances such as sewage waste that often finds its way through them through runoff or unfortunately dumping. Finally, wetlands are recreational. Many people enjoy not only the aesthetic properties that wetlands provide, but also the entertainment and relaxation that they can find there. Activities such as boating, fishing, kayaking, canoeing, they're all pastimes that can be found occurring in wetland environments. Now to illustrate to you how prolific a wetland ecosystem can be, we're going to assess our educational wetland here by conducting a biological survey of the macroinvertebrates that live here. Macroinvertebrates are simply invertebrate animals, animals that do not have a backbone or an internal skeleton, but can be seen with the naked eye. This is by far one of the most favorite activities that we do here with our students, the students that come out um, and visit us on field trip here in the park. So I'm really excited to share this, uh, this activity with you. Now, in order to conduct this activity, there's a few tools that you're going to need. Um, we use a net specifically designed for dip netting in the water. Um, but if you don't have one of these nets on hand, you can always use just an aquarium fish net. This is a large um, fishing net that you would find in an aquarium store or pet store. I also usually will bring out some buckets. This bucket here I use to collect the water and then I put the water that I pull out of my wetland, out of my pond, into my larger bucket for observations. Now I do want to take a moment and stress safety first. If you do have a small pond or a ditch near your home or neighborhood and you do want to conduct this activity from home, definitely make sure that you are aware of your surroundings. Observe the area in advance, being sure to stay away from steep inclines or bodies of water that might have larger predators like alligators. And always, always, always conduct this activity with an adult present. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put some clean water into the bucket before you begin so that you have somewhere immediate to transfer your catches into. So I'm going to toss my catch bucket out, fill it with water, lift it out, and pour it into my observation bucket. Then I will take my net and I can begin sweeping it through the water to see what I can catch. 
Now, what I always like to suggest to um, anyone doing this activity, because a lot of the, the invertebrates that you're gonna be looking for are near the bottom, they're what we call benthic invertebrates, we are going to try to get as close to the bottom as possible before sweeping it through the water. You wanna make sure you get near the bottom, but not against the bottom, because if you sweep your net across the bottom of the pond or across the wetland, you're just gonna catch a bunch of mud and it's gonna make it very difficult to see what you caught. So I'm going to lower it into the water. I'm going to reach down, pick it up about an inch and then sweep it through and bring it up. And then I immediately take my net over to my observation bucket. I turn my net upside down, push it inside out, lower it into the water and swish it around to knock anything I caught off into my observation bucket. And now I can take a moment and see what I caught. We spent some time earlier catching some critters. So we're gonna bring the camera over here so that you can see some of the things that we caught. All right, everybody. So after multiple attempts at catching some critters in our pond, we have a collection of organisms here in our first observation bucket. You can see a lot of things swimming around. We've got a lot of tadpoles and, and um, ghost shrimp. There's a lot of invertebrates and tiny uh, smaller microorganisms in here. You can also see there's quite a bit of vegetation that we pulled up and that will happen um, when you are dip netting, you will pull up algae and, and the aquatic floating vegetation as well. Usually we just pull that out with our hands in order to see what we are um, catching. However, for the sake of this video, we decided to actually scoop out some of the smaller organisms and put them in a cleaner bucket without the vegetation. So let me slide over to that one. And in this bucket here, you can see we've actually got, uh, we pulled out some of, the, some of the creatures we found. You can see in this bucket, we actually pulled out some fish. So we've got a small sunfish, we have um, some small mosquito fish babies as well. Let me see, there's one swimming right in the middle. And then you see all those little dots, just like in the other bucket, those are tons of little tiny tadpoles. We actually have um, a lot of different amphibians that live here in our park. Um, those are most likely cricket frog tadpoles, but we've got tree frogs and leopard frogs and bullfrogs. We've got all kinds of different species of toads. Um, so lots of amphibian life out here at Challenger Park. You can also see in our bucket, there are a bunch of ghost shrimp, those little see-through looking um, shrimp that are swimming around. Those are called ghost shrimp. And we also have um, some snails. And my favorite is we have some dragonfly babies. I'm gonna see if I can locate them. I think this is one, nope, that's not one. Let's see if I can find them. They like to hide, they get really still. Oh, there's one right there. You see them swimming right here, that's a small one. And then there is a larger one in here, if I can find him, but there's at least, oh, here he is, right here. There he goes, let me get him swimming. There he goes. So those are what baby dragonflies look like. Baby dragonflies spend all of their life in the water until they eventually um, change and emerge as an adult. And those are the guys you see flying around um, near wetlands all the time. So yeah, we did catch a lot of life. We didn't catch as much as we normally do, but we usually are pulling all kinds of invertebrates out of this water too. So like I said, I encourage you to go out and, and check out the water, water systems in your area, check out the wetlands around your homes and neighborhood and see what you can find. All right, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed learning about wetland ecosystems with us here today and getting to help us explore the wonderful diversity of life here at the Challenger 7 Memorial Park Educational Pond. If you like today's video, please feel free to hit the like button below. Um, or if you'd like to be notified of future presentations from our department or other Harris County Precinct 1 divisions, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel. If you have any specific questions for me, you can contact me at christina.hartman at cp1.hctx.net. Until then, we'll see you next time.